I remember when the first trailer for Skyrim dropped. I was hyped beyond belief to play Bethesda's next entry in the Elder Scrolls series. And even now, 14 years later, whenever I watch it, it still gives me goosebumps. As a homage to this, I decided to beat Skyrim as the true Dragonborn. Who is the true Dragonborn? This guy right here. He delivered the world's first Vosrodar, plus you see him devour a dragon's soul in the trailer. So this testosterone-filled half-breed is what some might consider to be the canon Dragonborn to some extent. So here are the rules for the run. I'm only allowed to use the items, armor, weapons and magic that the Dragonborn uses in the trailer. The only exception to this rule are items and shouts that are required for quests. To be more specific, I'm opting for a monkey see, monkey do rule. If the Dragonborn does it in the trailer, I'm allowed to as well. For example, from this shot here, we know that he uses a steel sword and a banded iron shield. Whereas, the other shots in the trailer are either first person shots, so we can't confirm it's from the same character, or third person shots of a completely different character entirely. Let's get started. I decided to remove the alternate start mod, which means I have to sit through the longest taxi ride of my entire life. But the character creation is quite a quick process this time round, as the base nor template is pretty spot on to the guy from the trailer. So all I really have to do is change the hair colour and the facial hair. I decide to name him, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Dragefot, which is Norwegian for Dragonborn. Alduin saves me from getting cancelled, then I head into Helgen Keep with Railoff and strip down to my loincloth. I let him do all the dirty work, then after we head into the cave, I find an iron helmet, run past all the enemies, and head to Riverwood to steal some iron boots and iron gauntlets. Stop right there, criminal scum! Okay, I need to pause the run here and address something. So you've probably noticed that the Dragonborn in the trailer doesn't actually wear any iron gauntlets. I've only just noticed it right now when I'm editing the gameplay. I think the reason why I thought that he wore them is because Bethesda made a lot of promotional images of the Dragonborn for Skyrim. And in those images, he is wearing those iron gauntlets. Like the one where he's standing on the rock with the uh, dragon tail going around him and he's holding like a dagger and a sword. Um, and then there's a statue that Bethesda made and he's wearing them in that as well. So it kind of made like a weird Mandela effect in my head where I was like, oh yeah, he wears iron gauntlets, it's, it's, it's fine. And even I, I even watched the trailer before I started the run and my brain was like, yeah, iron gauntlets, studded armor, iron boots, iron helmet, banded iron shield, steel sword. Um, all this stuff and I made up the rules and stuff and it's only now which is incredibly embarrassing that I realize that he doesn't actually wear them but I think I can give myself a pass because he does technically wear those gloves in promotional images made by Bethesda and it is the same guy he's got the same hair the same hair color he's wearing the same armor except he's just got gloves this time so I think for that reason um, I'm going to allow the Iron Gauntlets. If Bethesda never made those images for the game, I would have completely just gone, no, I need to remake the entire run and re-record it. But because technically it is linked to the game and it is linked to the trailer and it's kind of a promotional thing, the same as a trailer, and it is the same character, it's the same guy, I'm going to allow it. Um, but I am, <laughs> I am incredibly embarrassed by this. I made a massive, massive mistake, and I apologize, but I don't think it's that bad, really. So, yeah, I just thought I'd address it because I'm a massive idiot. After equipping them, I head to Dawnstar to loot the floor chest. Now that I'm less poor, I head to Whiterun and buy the rest of the gear that I need. Now that I'm fully equipped, and I look the part, I'm off to Bleakfall's Barrow to get the Dragonstone. For the time being, the damage I do isn't bad at all, but trust me, that won't be the case later. This starting gear isn't going to be that good late game without being upgraded. But unfortunately, the Dragonborn in the trailer never did any smithing or enchanting, so I won't be able to either. Also, on that topic, I'm not allowed to use any potions or healing spells, because again, the Dragonborn didn't use them in the trailer. After cutting down all the meth enjoyers, and yes, I'm including Arvel in that category. I learned the first part of the iconic shout, put the Meth Lord back in his coffin, 
pick up the dragon stone and deliver it to Farangar. Then the Jarl sends me out to kill my first dragon. Not being able to heal though proved to be quite the problem, because the dragon burnt my ass to a crisp almost immediately. On my second try though, I make him go the way of the dodo. After sucking his soul out like a dementor, I show off my newfound power in front of the guards, then the greybeard send me a quick voice message. Right, tell you what, you fat little cunt. Go and fuck yourself. Go and fucking crawl in the dirty, dank little hole where you fucking come from, you dirty fucking spastic. So I climb up to High Hrothgar to join their gang. After they run me through initiation, they send me to Ustengrav to pick up Arngir's Alcoholic of the Year trophy. I provide a permanent solution to the addict's drug problems, then I get taunted by Delphine. Whilst on my way to confront her though, I get jumped by Mirak's little brainwashed yobs, but I quickly put them in their places. I'm too busy to go and deal with this at the moment, but rest assured that we are going to take a trip to the Mirak family ranch later to kick his head in, because Tamriel isn't big enough for two dragonborns. After getting Arngir's trophy back from the thieving rat, I return it to him, and as a reward, he teaches me the final word of power for Skyrim's biggest meme. Then I make my way to Kynesgrove to kill Salakanir. On the way, the courier decides to scare the shit out of me by sprinting towards me menacingly. After outrunning him, he appears directly in front of me. I think this adds some proof to my theory that the courier is an omnipotent being, like the Kanka sisters from Ed, Ed and Eddie. Luckily, he seems to be using his abilities for good, at least for the time being anyway. Me and Delphine double team Salakanir, then she tells me to meet her in Riverwood to talk about her plan on infiltrating the Thalmor embassy. But I can't be bothered to listen to more of her drivel. So I borrow a bucket from Catler's farm and use it to defy the laws of physics to get into the Thalmor embassy early. It took me an insane amount of time to actually pull this off. So I decided to relieve some of my pent up frustration by slaughtering everyone inside. I grabbed Esburn's criminal record, murdered Malborn, then made my way to Riften to grab the old codger from his assisted living accommodation. After helping the Riften guards take down another winged wanker, I make a beeline straight for the ratway, then use the bucket trick again to skip most of it. I commit more assault and battery on some Thalmor, then drag Esburn out for a day trip and take him to visit Delphine who wasn't particularly impressed by my recent accomplishments, despite the fact that she made it quite clear that getting into the Thalmor embassy was an incredibly difficult task. There's no pleasing some people. They want to go and stare at Alderin's wall for a bit, but before we do that, I decided to go and get the Elder Scroll. After grabbing the tools to get in there from Septimus Prime, I actually managed to get into the Mazar Cliff using a wooden plate and whirlwind sprint. After I grab the ancient toilet paper, I hitch a ride to Solstheim so I can knock Mirak off his high horse. After heading over to the Earthstone, I bump into a familiar face. He's a scam and fat fucking bastard. He tells me to go over to Mirak's temple to figure out what he's doing on this ash pit of an island. On the way over there though, a gang of werebears try to mug me. So I lured them back to Raven Rock. I'm just doing my civic duty by helping the guards earn their pay. After clearing out a reaver camp, I meet up with Freya at the temple, and we delve into its decrepit depths, carving a path through a myriad of smackheads, yobbos and anorexics along the way. I learn the first part of the dragon aspect shout, but unfortunately, I can't use it. Because if you watch the Dragonborn trailer, it's not my character that uses it. After delving deeper, eventually I come across Tom Riddle's diary. I have a brief chat with Mirak and his hentai demons, then Freya's old man tells me to free the people of Solstheim from having their brains turned to sludge. But to do that, I need to learn the bend will shout. So I head over to Searing's watch to get it. After learning the shout, and Mirak half inching a dragon soul from me, I spend the next 30 minutes trying to break the will stones. Because once you use the shout on them, a lurker appears to defend it. They are tanky as shit, and they dish out a ton of damage. After more deaths than I can count, eventually I manage to purge all the Mind Stones. Then I head to the Mushroom Kingdom to talk to the Scammer about getting another Black Book. After telling me where it is, we go together to retrieve it. After taking out the Reaver's Guard in it, me and Scamelot enter the Nachardak Ruins. To get the book, we have to restore the Steam Flow to the Reading Chamber, which is easier said than done, as I kept getting my rocker knocked by the mechanical menaces inside. After a lot of trial and error, we accomplish our goal and I read the book. Now I have to get through what can only be described as the love child of Lewis Carroll and H.P. Lovecraft. 
Now, if you thought the Lurkers were tanky, they've got nothing on the Seekers. And to make matters worse, they have a ranged attack. Plus their aim is damn near surgical. So I opted to run past all the enemies inside this nonsensical maze. And once I arrive at the end, I get lectured by Cthulhu's Skidmark. He offers to help me in my quest to destroy Mirak. But in return, he wants the Skald's secrets. The book at the end offers three upgrades. But the only one I'm able to use is Dragonborn Force. Which boosts the damage of Unrelenting Force. And as a nice little bonus, gives it the ability to disintegrate my enemies. After this, me and Scammo the Clown slaughter a dragon, then Storm gets to experience a weeb's wet dream. And I learn the final word of the Bend Will Shout. I return to Ravenrock and read the first black book to get to Cthulhu's Wonderland. Like before, I ran past every enemy to get to my goal as quickly as I could. When I finally get to the end of the line, I tame Saratar and ride him all the way to Mirak. The dickhead killed me so many times I lost count. In fact, this is the most I've ever died whilst playing Skyrim. I am severely underleveled and under-equipped for this fight. At one point, I got stuck under the map, and I thought I could just fuss Rodar the dickhead through the floor, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Eventually, I figured out that if you shield bash him, he'll teleport to the other side of the boss arena. Then all I have to do is dodge his fireballs and burst his eardrums with Fuss Rodar. After a long cycle of this, the Shitstain intervenes and impales him. Now that I'm the only Dragonborn left, I return to Skyrim and have a well-deserved break admiring some ancient architecture. After this, I learn Dragonrend, kick seven bells of shit out of Alduin, then gather the leaders of Skyrim for a debate. And according to Twitter, the only way to win a debate is to be the loudest person in the room. Then I trap Odaving and ride him to Skaldafen. When I arrive, I proceed to murder everything in sight, including the flying frogs. I slaughter the dragon priest, then when I enter Sovngarde, I smack around High King Torig, have a scrap with Eddie All, then meet up with the three invalids that caused this situation in the first place. And like always, Alduin is an utter embarrassment. Once his bones are scattered across this little slice of heaven, the Dragonborn decides to stay in Sovngarde, because his destiny has been fulfilled and the world has no use for him now. And with that, I beat Skyrim as the true Dragonborn. I really enjoyed this run. It was weirdly nostalgic. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe? Plus, if you hit the notification bell, you get to watch more juicy content from yours truly when it releases. Also, I have a Discord server. The link will be in the description and in my channel bio. If you have any games you want to see, or you just want to have a chat, drop a comment down below or message the Discord server. And I'll see you next time.